Console gamers are much like every other gamer. They game. However, a console is built, manufactured, and processed by a single company with a single goal in mind. Profit via e-commerce via subscriptions. This video is sponsored by Hashier Mining. Have you ever tried Bitcoin mining but was left unsatisfied? Well, try out Hashier today for 500 GigaHash for free for a whole week. And what is even better is that you get to keep what you earn during that week after your first successful purchase. Use my link down below to support the channel with no extra cost to you. Try out Hashier today. Now let me try to explain. Xbox and PlayStation lead the front when it comes to the console warfare against the ever so popular PC. While I do feel that all have their opinions, mine are set in the fact that people should at least have reasons why they may or may not choose a certain platform instead of just blindly saying whatever they feel and not having anything to back up those opinions. I understand that some people don't have the research behind that and don't really care. And a good example would be I choose Xbox and a Windows-based PC because I can game on my PC, do various other menial tasks, and still make not make it break a sweat. However, I have my Xbox One S, which you can find a link to buy your own down in the description, um, because I have multiple Xboxes in my home. Thanks to Xbox in-home sharing, I can buy a game for my Xbox, and the other person can pay me half the cost for it, and then we both can share and play the same games and libraries at the same time online and offline. While the popular PC platform Steam does offer a similar service, sadly it's not as fleshed out and will be covered next week in more detail in the episode Why People Like PC Gaming. So, back to the point of just game, as many people call it, when referring to the features, or lack thereof, of consoles, while consoles, while consoles can, in fact, do more than just game, many just attribute them to gaming as that is what they are designed to do. So, why do people choose to game on a console? Well, I scavenged the internet, and it was very hard to find um, five popular excuses and or explanations for those excuses, and I'm going to go ahead and exclude the one listed above about, PC, about the um, Xbox in-home sharing, simply because I already went into detail about that. So, the first common... Uh, excuse, I guess, is I've always played with a controller. Right. The common, I was born with a controller, so woe is me. Right? Wrong. A lot of people prefer the feel of a controller, and while many PC gamers say that there are many games that support controllers on the PC, there isn't always support for them. This can be horrifying to someone who can't remember all of the keyboard shortcuts to do everything within the game. And then some games may have different shortcuts to others, such as FPS and RPGs. And it just is how it is to some people. Some people just don't like using anything other than a controller because it's too complicated. Number two, console gaming just works. Yes, while this is very true and the most common scapegoat to the console PC discussion that continues to this day, and while yes, there are often better graphics and options, etc. on the PC, the console is guaranteed, guaranteed to work out of the box. For example, I was running Titanfall 2 on my Xbox One S and was getting anywhere between 63 and 92 FPS while capturing through my Elgato Pro capture card. The results could have been better if I plugged directly into the capture card rather than an HDMI switcher and then the Elgato. The fact is, after a few updates and downloads of the games, which are now supposed supposedly better optimized now, I don't know. That's what Xbox is saying. You're ready to play and you don't have to fiddle around with it. 
because on the PC, I had to essentially completely go offline whenever I want to play Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Because you play just does not work. I really wish that I would have just bought the game on Xbox, and I may have paid a couple extra bucks for it, but it would have been worth it. So now for the third argument. The PC just isn't user-friendly, and the PC is more unstable than a console. Much like the last point, and as I just said, it is kind of true in some aspects. While console gaming is made so that even a grandma could use it, your grandma probably also has a PC and or a smartphone, which you taught her how to use a feature once or twice. Sadly, computers do break, and when they do, it can be quite annoying and or catastrophic especially if you don't know what you're doing. For me, as an experienced PC tinkerer, I still have issues with my CPU frying a few of my BIOS chips, but do I overclock my system? Still? Yeah, because why else would I buy a system that could overclock? I don't know, you'll have to tell me down in the comments what your opinions are on this subject, but Sometimes PC is user-friendly, and other times it's foreign. Sometimes people break their system and have to take it to Staples or Best Buy and pay hundreds of dollars for a simple problem, like to have a RAM stick issue fixed. If you go PC, just remember to do your homework. Finally, number four, the exclusives. The good old Halo and God of War excuses. However, it's not really a good excuse now since you can play most Xbox titles through virtualization on your PC and or with the Play Anywhere feature from Microshit. Um, and now that it's in all Microshit published games, it'll be delivered to you if you have anything past the Windows 10 anniversary update, which was forced down to your box unless you downgraded to Windows 7 or Windows 8.1. PlayStation is in the works with some things, however, you know, it may take them forever to get that done, but we at Ohio Eye Project are working actually on a few new devices that could allow users to use their PC's more advanced hardware to their advantage and make more use of better titles and, re and resolutions, but this excuse can be shot down with one word. Emulators. And number five, I just want to have fun with my friends on Xbox or PlayStation. So this is the final excuse. And I, I really had to stretch this list. And even after looking it up, I was really hard-pressed to find a uh, good excuse that people could use. Honestly, I too have separate friends on every platform. While some are shared across those platforms, I love gaming. But I stare at my 200 plus games on PC and Xbox combined and I get generally bored with life. But when a friend invites me to do a video or just chat while we stab some mofos in Call of Duty, I get slightly happier. It's crazy to expect people to make their friends build a three to four hundred dollar PC and then rebuy all their games. Just do with what you have and have fun. And I guess that's the message of the video. No matter what you do, no matter how you game, just have fun. Remember that we're all gamers no matter our platform, no matter the wounds we play and fight as one. So tell me what you guys think down below. Thank you for watching, and if you made it this far, I want you to leave a comment below saying something like, I watched, but I learned, and tell me what you learned, even if it was nothing. I enjoy hearing from you, and I hope that you will join me next week when I talk about PC gaming and the misunderstandings behind it. So remember to stay loyal and stay subscribed, and I'll see you all next time. Yeah.